Today I'm reviewing a 2013 Audi A3, which is Audi's entry level car offering in the US market. The A3 was actually first introduced in 1996, but we didn't get it in the US until 2006. So although this is the first generation model that we see in the United States, it's actually the second generation model of the A3. This generation lasted through 2014 and saw a minor refresh for the 2009 model year. One thing that's kind of unique about this generation is that it was only available in this five door hatchback configuration. With the all new generation in 2015, they did begin offering the vehicle in a four door sedan as well. Uh, for the 2013 model year, it was also available in two different trim package offerings. The base model is the premium, and this is the more upscale premium plus package. Plus it's also got the S-Line sport package. Now overall, you can see that in terms of styling, it's a very attractive vehicle. Like other Audi vehicles, it's got a really nice sporty look to it, yet also very premium. And one thing that's great about the A3 is that it's a very affordable vehicle, but it shares a number of styling cues with its more expensive siblings. Uh, particularly with the refresh that we get in 2009, it's got a number of styling cues that match those more expensive models. Uh, the biggest change that we get with that refresh is to the front fascia here, which is entirely updated. We get new headlights, a uh, new grille, and new bumper design actually matches quite closely with what we see in the Audi A4. So you see a nice large grille with a chrome surround, modern headlight fixture with an integrated LED daytime running light. Down below, we've got fog lights with a chrome surround, and then a nicely updated front bumper with a lower spoiler. Side profile of the vehicle doesn't change a whole lot with that update, but it's a pretty nice clean look anyway. Uh, you will see that with this vehicle, it's got the S-Line package. So we got the S-Line badging, get a unique set of wheels and a few upgrades to the interior as well. Up top, you'll see that we've got dual sunroofs, one in the front, one for the rear seat. So it brings a lot of light into that cabin. Again, gives the vehicle a more premium feel. And then coming around to the back, a nice clean look here as well. Very modern tail light design. I like how it integrates with the rear hatch. And then you'll see we've also got dual exhaust. So all around a very attractive vehicle. I think it's a shame that this generation wasn't offered in the US as a four door sedan as well, but still a very attractive vehicle. Shares a lot of styling cues with those more expensive Audi models, yet much more reasonably priced. Audi has really established itself as a benchmark leader when it comes to interior designs, and the A3 is no exception to that rule. It's not necessarily at the same level of refinement and quality that you get on the A4 model going up, but it's still a very nice interior nonetheless. You'll see that looking at the interior, it's just got a very clean overall layout to it, high quality materials throughout, nice accent colors, and a great level of available features and options. This vehicle in particular has the S-Line package, so we get the tri-spoke steering wheel. It's leather wrapped with perforated leather on the sides here. We've got paddle shifters on the back. We've got audio controls on the front. We've got power windows, power door locks, power heated mirrors. Instrument cluster's got a nice clean look to it with a gray background. It's got chrome surrounds. We've got automatic headlights. Um, I love the circular vents that we get here on the A3. It kind of matches the look that you get on the Audi TT. And then you'll see that in the center, we've got our audio system with AM FM radio. We've got CD player. Uh, you can also connect using a Bluetooth connection or a hardwire connection. We've got navigation, number of vehicle settings that are controlled through this system. Uh, this is kind of a simplified version of the Audi MMI system that you get in other more upscale Audi models. So you'll see they've got the rotary knob here with the four dials around the side. In a lot of more upscale models, that's all kind of centered here uh, in the middle. So it's still got a lot of the functionality that you get with those other vehicles. The layout is just slightly different. You'll see we've also got dual zone climate control with heated seats for the driver and front passenger. This vehicle has the automatic transmission, two cup holders here in the middle, um, emergency brake, and we've got a center console. Below that, we've got two 12 volt outlets. Up above, we've got a self dimming rear view mirror, and then we've got our dual sunroofs. This front one is tilt and sliding. The rear sunroof is fixed. Well, as you can see, the back seat of the A3 isn't particularly spacious, but there is just enough room nonetheless. I'm five foot 10 and I've got the driver's seat position where I'd want it for driving. Got just enough leg room and just enough headroom. Center seat here folds down into an armrest. We've also got a pass-through compartment. If you've got skis or another longer object, those can pass through the middle and we've still got room for the outer passengers. Fold that back up. Also got a storage compartment here in the middle. 
and then we've got two cup holders. Also got a nice airy environment back here with the dual sunroofs and then the seat backs also drop down in a 60-40 split if you want to further increase rear cargo area. And around on the back, if we open up this rear hatch, you'll see that we've got a decent amount of rear cargo area. There is a built-in 12 volt outlet and then you'll see that we've also got this built-in privacy cover, uh, conceals objects in the back when the rear hatch is closed. It can also be easily removed. And then again, we can drop down those rear seat backs to further increase rear cargo area. When the A3 was first introduced to the US market, front wheel drive models came standard with a two liter four cylinder turbo and the Quattro all wheel drive models came with a 3.2 liter V6. The two liter four cylinder was later offered on those Quattro all wheel drive models and then the 3.2 was discontinued altogether. And personally, between the two engine options, I like the two liter four cylinder more myself. It's got 200 horsepower and 211 pound feet of torque. That's paired to either a six speed manual or six speed automatic transmission. Zero to 60 will take you about 6.3 seconds. And it's got an EPA rating of 21 miles per gallon in the city and 28 to 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Slightly better fuel economy with that manual transmission. The 3.2 liter V6 for comparison has 250 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 will take you 5.8 seconds. It's paired exclusively to the six speed automatic transmission and does come standard with that Quattro all wheel drive system. Uh, the A3 was also offered for a few years with a two liter four cylinder turbo diesel, which was the TDI, had 140 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 would take you 8.5 seconds. And the EPA rating was 29 miles per gallon in the city and 37 miles per gallon on the highway. Those models were only available in front wheel drive. Well, not only is the A3 good looking inside and out, but it's also a very nice vehicle to drive. I love the compact size that you get with it. As much as the A4 going up, are larger, more luxurious models, they lose a little bit of the driving experience because of the larger dimensions. And with the A3, it's just so much smaller and compact that has kind of a sportier feel to it. And it's got a really good overall ride quality, great handling, it's very smooth, it's compliant, it's comfortable. And then of course, it's a very sporty vehicle to drive as well. The powertrains that you get with this, um, all the way from that base two liter four cylinder to the 3.2 to the TDI, all three of those engines really do offer a nice level of performance. A lot of power, they're pretty quick in terms of acceleration, and at the same time, they're also fairly fuel efficient. The A3 actually shares a lot in common with the Volkswagen Jetta. Obviously, this is more expensive, but you get Audi styling, so it looks like a much more expensive vehicle. It has more of that premium vibe. Likewise, the interior of the vehicle has a much nicer level of refinement, fit and finish. The design is nicer. You have more luxury tech features. Um, and then the A3 also gets the best powertrain options from the Jetta lineup. So we've got that TDI diesel engine. This two liter four cylinder is the same engine that you get in the top end performance model of the Jetta, which is the GLI. And then that 3.2 liter V6 was never even offered on the Jetta. So you're really kind of taking the best of all worlds. Yes, it's more expensive, but you get the Audi styling, you get the Audi interior, you get the best powertrains. I think it's a pretty good overall package. You will see that the two liter four cylinder's got a pretty good little kick. That turbo is very handy for giving you power when you need it, yet helping to save you fuel when you're just kind of cruising along. So that's a look at the 2013 model, the Audi A3, a very nice vehicle all around, very stylish on the exterior. I love the fact that it shares a number of styling cues with some of the more expensive Audi models out there, yet it's a much more affordable vehicle. Likewise, inside a very nicely appointed interior, it's very comfortable, it's very smooth to drive, uh, fairly powerful and fuel efficient. And then I also love the fact that it's available with that Quattro all wheel drive system. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. For more car reviews, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.